Hi guys and welcome back. My name is Juha Rokangas and you are watching the second video in a series Zen and the Art of Guitar Maintenance. This time I'll focus on a very simple and specific task. How to restring your Les Paul in the best possible way. Especially there are many ways to mount the strings to the tuner posts and on this video you will learn the very best way, period. I wanted to give you super precise instructions and to achieve this Emma and I ended up shooting the actual work separate from me explaining what's happening. So it'll be me working on this guitar and commentating myself. Well, I think it worked out pretty well actually and maybe a way to do more videos like this. Um, have a look and let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Okay guys, without further ado, let's go. Okay guys, let's begin. We'll start off by removing the old strings. Loosening them up a bit before clipping them off, like so. Then I'm putting a couple of pieces of masking tape to the tailpiece so it won't fall off when I clip off the strings. So the tailpiece won't make any marks on the lacquer. Be careful when removing the strings from the tuner's posts to not scratch up your, your headstock. Better to take your time, it's not, not in a rush. So. And this is a good moment to clean up a little bit when the strings are not there to disturb. And I'm also um, tightening the tuner posts, the nut, nuts like that. Use the right key for this. If you don't have the right key, get one instead of using a bad key because that will just slip and make ugly marks to your headstock. A lot of tuners are mounted like this but others have bushings, so you can't tighten them like that. They're, they're mounted from behind with screws. So here again, I'm protecting the, the top, the lacquer, before removing the strings to not scratch up the lacquer, the top. A good moment to clean up a bit under the strings like so. So we're not doing a full setup here but just a quick clean up this guitar is in in nice condition um and it doesn't need oiling or waxing the fretboard and things like that so here i'm showing now <clears throat> one way of mounting your strings to the stop tail piece so you would wrap them around like that and this is something made famous by jimmy page of led zeppelin and you can do it like that um, I don't typically do it for a particular reason. I will show you soon why. Um, I'm just doing them the way they're more or less meant to be put. And if I would want to or need to um, adjust the angle from the stop tailpiece to the bridge, I can simply raise the tailpiece. It is adjustable, so I could raise it higher to achieve you know to achieve that same effect as wrapping the strings around the tailpiece at this point i am mounting all the strings to the tailpiece sometimes it's hard to tell the the b and e strings apart if they're rolled like that and if they're not color coded so an easy way to to recognize which one is thinner gauge, a lighter gauge, is just to press the rolls like that, so you'll, you'll recognize it immediately. The one that feels lighter is the high E string. So, so I'm using here um, Big Bend's Nut Sauce Lubricant for the nut. And these tools that you see me using there, those little 
yeah these these are provided with that tube of uh, the big bands lubricant so I'm placing it a little bit to, to each one of the nut slots like so I think this substance it is um, most likely it is a mixture of Vaseline and Teflon I would assume there are other brands like that we're using here the big bands it's it's pretty good stuff for this so I'm look I'm I already mounted the all the six strings to the tailpiece and this is uh, I'm using the other ends of the strings now to rub a bit on those knot slots uh, for two reasons one to to clean them up a bit if there would be uh, some kind of dirt grime built into them so this cleans up the slots uh, effectively um, and another reason is that I'm checking that the strings are sliding in the slots without any feeling of friction in my fingers so they should really move back and forth smooth kind of gliding back and forth without the feeling of uh, getting tangled up in those slots if they feel too tight um, you're gonna have tuning stability problems so and at that point it would be a good idea to take the guitar to a pro I'm cleaning up the knot a bit so we'll start off mounting the strings to the tuner posts from the low E and the high E strings so I'm moving the other ones aside like so and I'm pre-adjusting the tuner posts so that they are pointing sideways on the headstock as you can see here and you will soon enough find out why okay so okay mounting the low E string to the tuner post like so as you can see here I'm leaving a bit of slack to the string not too much here you can see I'm using my fingers as gauging how much excess I'm leaving there demonstrating here also with a ruler two and a half inch six centimeters something like that okay now pay attention what's going on wrapping it wrapping the end of the string under tighten up around the post and then the top secret bit <laughs> like so this is where I'm creating a knot to the post tightening up a little bit not all the way yet just a little bit because here what I'm doing this is another important bit I'm releasing all the twist from the string as you can see the the end of the string kind of rolled around when I released it from the tailpiece a bit so I'm release releasing the tension from there and clipping off the excess string moving on to the high E string so we're gonna do all six strings here to make it super extra clear what's going on here you can see another one so this is a mirror image of course because we're on the other side of the headstock so pay attention how and which way the knot will be generated there and this is the moment when I start tightening it up this is where the string is locked around the post and it won't give in at all from there okay again releasing the tension from the other end like so releasing the twist the possible twist that you have in the string it's very important and wrapping the string around like that neatly so it rolls under the starting point not over under cutting off the extra 
moving on to the A string. As you can see, I um, started from low E, moving on to high E, and then to A, to B. The reason for this order of doing it in this way is that there won't be any obstructions from the other strings when I move further and further away from the knot. And there is the knot that locks the string, string in place. Releasing the twist, possible twist. It's not always there, but it might be, and it's important to get it out. I'll explain in a moment why. So here you can see the knot, and that's when it locks. And it really won't give in from that end when you do it this way. So this is a bulletproof way of stringing up this type of tuners. Okay, this is a Les Paul, but obviously any guitar tuners with posts like this hole in the post like that. Any guitar with tuners this type can be tuned up like and should be tuned up like this if it's not a locking tuner. Let's change the angle a little bit. So we're going to change angle so you get you get maximum amount of information how to do this. There we go and checking the slack for the string and wrapping it around and the end of the string goes under, twisting over, locking it up. Yep, a bit of tension there. That's the way to go. And the reason why I'm with every string, I'm releasing the twist from the stop tail piece is obviously that um, this way, um, we make sure that the tuning stability or the, the intonation comes as good as it can. Because if there is a twist in the, in the string like that, as you saw, there can be. Um, it does affect to the to the way the string intonates, and the notes are going to play in tune. So make that a routine. Whenever you start winding the string to the post, you release the tension from. The, and this is also also the reason why I don't do it the quote-unquote Jimmy Page style because that doesn't allow me to release the tension anymore, you know, because there's that wrap around, I can't release the tension like that. This is why I don't do it that way, to put simple. And here we go, the last one, the G string. By now you're familiar with this, but a bit of repetition won't hurt. There's the lock. Tighten up a bit. Releasing the twist. And we move on. So, getting to the end of things. Clipping off the extra string and what happens next? Removing those pieces of plastic, uh, the masking tape. And here I am gently stretching the strings. If and when you're doing this, I mean, this is not necessary. The strings will stretch when you play, 
but this will make them stay in tune a bit quicker. But you need to be really careful to not overstretch them. Just a tiny bit of stretching like that will be enough. Um, and I'm now demonstrating to you what happens if you overstretch them. And I'm, I'm demonstrating it with this tool that is called the string stretcher. Um, it is okay to use this, use this tool if you want, but you need to be super extra careful because it is very easy to overstretch, especially with this tool. So let me show you what happens when you overstretch. Place the tool there like that and then you start grinding on the string like that. Oh, it kind of hurts me to see that because I know that the string is ruined. <laughs> so you see in a second what happened to the string. Yeah, you can already see it when I'm, but when the string comes off, it's obvious. Look, the string is all twisted like that. And what you did was that you actually um, disengaged the string, the, the winding of the string from the core wire, the piano wire, by st overstretching it. So you ruined it and it won't, won't play in tune anymore. It's impossible to intonate such a string. So off it goes and I will quickly replace it with a fresh string. And uh, on this video, we're not doing an intonation setting or other sort of setup stuff. So this is just restringing the guitar. So if your guitar was in, in good intonation and so uh, good adjustments before you started restringing it, and if you are using um, string uh, brand type that is pretty stable from string from set to set, set to another, um, meaning that the intonation characters characteristics remain somewhat the same from a set of strings to another. It's not necessary to to reintonate between every um, restringing. I I typically would check the intonation, but here this was just a simple restringing guitar. Most of all, showing you those few important things to take into account when stringing up. So we're, we're pretty much there. Yep, that's it. Guys, we did it. Okay, a quick wrap up on the essential steps to master restringing your Les Paul, your unicorn or equivalent guitar with non-locking tuners with the common post such as these guitars have. So number one, be careful, take your time, breathe in, breathe out, tape the tailpiece in place so it won't drop on your guitar top and dent the lacquer, remove the old strings with great care to not scratch up the headstock or the top. Number two, the locking mount of strings to the tuner posts. Take your time to learn this inside out. It really pays off. The biggest advantage being of obviously that the tuning stability of your guitar improves. So this method is literally as effective as having locking tuners in your guitar. And it works not only for a Les Paul, but any guitar with tuner posts like in this one. And if you find this a useful tip, don't keep it as a secret. Share to all your guitar playing friends too. Forum, social media, whatever you can think of. Number three, safety first. Please don't leave those sharp string ends hanging at the headstock. They can be seriously dangerous. Now, you know, if not to yourself, you never know, accidents can happen. You don't want to poke anybody's eyes with the string ends. So clip them off. And having no tools is no excuse. Get the tools. Watch my video about essential tools you should own. A link up in that corner. Now, number four, releasing the twist of the strings. May sound like a small thing, but regarding the intonation characteristics of the strings, it is more important than you might think. So number five, do not overstretch your strings. You saw it in the video, you ruin them. Simple as that. 
So remember, you can overstretch without any stretching tool as well. So be gentle to the strings even when you do the pre-stretching by hand. And another way, if you're not in a rush, is to skip the stretching part altogether. Just string up and play. You know, the locking mount at the tuners that I showed you, this will quicken the setting time of the, uh, of the strings anyways, so not necessary to stretch at all. So that's about it. This video covers stringing up most Gibson Les Pauls or equivalent guitars, especially the locking mount method is useful in, in even more uh, widely ways, basically with any guitar with non-locking tuners, with a hole through the post, like, like these Grovers in this guitar, or, or the Gotos that we use in the, in the Unicorn Classic back there, and, and many, many others. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, please leave your comments down below. And if you found the video useful, hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm to spread this video to more people like you. And if you crave for more content from me, do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon too, so you'll be notified of new videos. And last but not least, if you're not familiar with my weekly Wednesday live streams on YouTube, the link to the full playlist up in the corner now. Go check it out. So thanks for watching. Always a pleasure. See you on the next one. Peace, love and good music. Take care.